welcome back to Elfo Deco. Today we are going to be making some iridescent trays. And I have this big roll of iridescent film. These are the ones that you stick to the windows with soapy water. And I had purchased these for another project, so I was wondering if I put them into the mold <laughs> to create the piece, like if we did it with the the paper technique, I wonder how that will turn out. And the iridescent film looks different on different color backgrounds. The colors shift differently. So we're going to experiment with three different trays and see how that turns out. Let's get started. The first thing we have to do is cut our iridescent film to fit the trays that we are going to make. For this project, we are making three different abstract shape trays. To get the exact shape and size I need, I am using these acrylic templates designed specifically for those abstract molds that I have. I am just tracing the template on the film with a marker, which then I switched to a sharpie because you couldn't really see it. And then cutting the outline with a scissor. Once that is done, we will move on to the pouring part. These films are plastic, so it should be resin safe and no lamination is needed. These trays will be poured in three layers, the tray rim, the film, and the background. The resin that we are using is Totobolt's High Performance Slow Resin. Two of these trays will have a white rim, and the white will be a mix of this white diamond effect mica and mixo white tint. One of the trays will have a black rim, and the black will be a mix of the blackbird from Unicone and mixo's black tint. Make sure the molds are cleaned before you pour. I am using blue painter's tape here to pick up some of the mica that spilled into the mold. These abstract tray molds that we're using here is from Elifol. You can find the link for these in the description. And I do offer a coupon code for my viewers, so check that out after. Other materials used in this project will also be linked in the description. I try to carefully pour into the rim, but if it drips into the middle of the mold or where it's not supposed to be, it can easily be picked up with blue tape after it hardens. Once I finish pouring, I will use a heat gun to pop any of the bubbles that rise to the surface. For the second layer, we're placing the iridescent film into clear resin. We have our Totable High Performance Slow Resin already mixed. These films are the ones that adhere to the windows with soapy water, so there is a clear film that protects the sticky side. We're just going to remove the clear film because it was creating some bubbles at some parts since this was on a roll of film. I am using a piece of packaging tape to split them apart and then I will be placing the iridescent film into the mold. When I place the film into the mold, I'll press down on it to bring the bubbles that are getting trapped underneath the film to the surface. I didn't want to do this too much though or too aggressively because I was worried it would create creases in the film. If there are any bubbles that gets trapped under the film, 
we could fix it easily with a top coat, but I won't be able to fix any of the crease marks. Here is what the film looks like in the mold for now. Each one of these trays will have a different background because the iridescent looks different against different colors. The arch tray will be black, the triangle tray will be clear, and the squiggles tray will be white. I am creating black and white mixtures the same way I did in the first layer for the rims. Now the trays are fully cured and we can demold them to see how they turned out. Starting with the clear one, since the film was from a roll and not a flat sheet, there's some curving to the film and I should definitely flatten it out next time. But the iridescent effect is super neat though. The bubbles on the surface can be patched up with a top coat and I have a separate video for top coating trays if you want to see how I do my top coats. Now let's see how the white one turns out. It looks very similar to the clear, maybe just a tad more blue and it shifts to the pink, which is really cool. The whole iridescent film is super neat. Now the arch one though, that's totally different. Look at that shifting. It's not Halloween yet, but lots of spooky vibes here. I don't really like the curving of the film, so I'm going to try and see if I can cover that up. Maybe add something to the top coat of these trays instead of just the clear top coat. But these are the results of this iridescent film experiment. Let me know what you think! Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found this experiment interesting and inspiring. I know I already have some projects in mind for the future, so don't forget to subscribe to our channel and be the first to know when these projects come out. And if you are going to be using these iridescent films for your own projects, let me know what you're going to make with them. I'll see you next time!